Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-red giant combo deck featuring Calamity Bearer alongside Mind Link Mech. The mech a 3-mana 4-3 vehicle that has flying, crew cost of 1, and when the mech becomes crewed for the first time each turn, until end of turn, the mech becomes a copy of target a non-legendary creature that crewed it, except it's a 4-3 with flying and still has the vehicle and artifact types. So what that means is if we play turn 3 Mind Link mech, and then turn 4 play Calamity Bearer and crew the mech with it, Calamity Bearer a 3-4 saying if a giant source we control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. So now the Mind Link mech a 4-3 copy of Calamity Bearer, which will deal 4 damage, doubled by Calamity Bearer, doubled once again because Mind Link mech now also has the same text, so deals 16 damage on turn 4, and the opponent cannot even interact with it at sorcery speed, as our vehicle is not a creature in the opponent's turn. So that's the main combo that we're working with. Then of course Calamity Bearer very good in multiples, just playing multiple copies will also result in a ton of damage, and then we can maybe set up some one-sided sweepers, either with Crush the Weak dealing 2 damage to each creature, exiling those creatures in a process, can also be foretold so we can spend our mana on turn 2, and then we also have a battle of Frost and Fire to deal 4 damage to each non-giant creature and each Planeswalker, on chapter 2 we get to scry, and finally it can maybe draw and discard if we cast an expensive spell, like our Quakebringer, which can also be foretold on turn 2 to play it later for 4 mana, a 5-4 giant saying opponents cannot gain life, and at the beginning of our upkeep, Quakebringer deals 2 damage to each opponent, but this only triggers if we have Quakebringer on the battlefield or if we have Quakebringer in the graveyard and we control a giant. So it also combos with controlling Calamity Bearer, and then the bearer will double the damage from Quakebringer, meaning 4 damage out of the graveyard instead of just 2. And an easy way to get Quakebringer in the graveyard is to discard it to the second chapter of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which of course is a very good standard card in general, and the Reflection of Kikijiki, also incredibly synergistic with Calamity Bearer. Once we start making copies of it, we can double our damage output once again to maybe set up those one-hit KOs. Then the rest of our deck has a lot of cheap removal with Strangle times 2, full set of Frostbite to go with some of our snow basics, and for Fading Hope. Then at 2 mana we have Glimpse the Cosmos, another giant synergy card. Gets to take a look at the top 3 cards of our library, putting one in our hand, and we can also replay it from the graveyard once for just a single blue if we control a giant. So usually want to wait to play our giant and have enough mana to replay Glimpse in case of removal, so we get immediate value. And then uh, two copies of Iteration to complement Glimpse as another cheap card draw effect, although this one we're usually playing later in the game. And then we already mentioned Fable, two copies of Celestis as another ramp card that still lets us play some of our one mana spells afterwards, including maybe a Foretold Crush the Week that we exiled on turn 2, and then the Draw and Discard and the Life Gain can also help us find the missing combo pieces. And then the mana base also has a few giants with our two copies of Hall, and some extra creature lands with Den of the Bugbear, which can also help crew our Mind Link mech if we're missing creatures otherwise. That way we can maybe get an attack for 4 damage in, alongside an attack for 16 to finish off the opponent. And then plenty of dual lands, the channel lands, also quite synergistic, as Crucible can make some hasty 1-1s to potentially give our Mind Link mech haste as well, and then Soaring City to bounce opposing creatures, and then a few snow lands to enable our Frostbite, but even at 2 damage it's good enough. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand, we've got our two combo pieces, just looking for a bit of interaction. If we're about to miss our land drop, we could maybe Iteration on turn 2. Even give up a little bit of value just to make sure we can curve Mind Link into Calamity Bear. Up against the Black Sacrifice deck and Crush the Weak, especially useful against cards like Shambling Ghast. Now we probably just glimpse the Cosmos and look for land. Opponent might have a Deadly Dispute here that they want to cast. And against the Black Sacrifice deck, most of their removal is sorcery speed, so they won't have many answers to Mind Link mech. Probably take another Calamity Bearer, since they're more likely to answer my giant than they are my vehicle. And there's a Deadly Dispute. So we still don't have land 4 lined up, but at least we got through a bunch of non-land cards. 
Sedgemore Witch. Crush the Weak, still a perfect answer here. And there's our land. Okay, play Mind Link. And hopefully we can kill them in two attacks. Now if they're playing with Sedgemore Witch, they might have some cheaper instants that might be able to kill our mech at instant speed. We'll have to wait and see here. Tenacious Underdog Blitzed, that's fine. So we take six. Another creature that we would love to exile with Crush the Weak. And an Eye Twitch, alright, that can chum block our Mind Link mech. So now we might go for a slightly different approach. Especially with a backup Crush the Weak. Let's just exile both creatures and then next turn we can go for Calamity Bear. Five mana for another underdog being blitzed. And the air points at 16, so now Mind Link plus Calamity Bear is a one hit KO. Opponent might have another deadly dispute, so that leaves him pretty much tapped out. One treasure, not gonna be enough for any instant speed removal. And yeah, this is gonna be a pretty easy kill. Crew Mind Link, out of nowhere. Hit the opponent for 16. Maybe they have a Ray of Enfeeblement to shrink down our creature, but they don't, and our opponent dies. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Sadly, no blue mana, just uh, one mountain, so gonna have to be a Mulgan, despite having both combo pieces. And yeah, once again, we've got Mind Link and Calamity Bear, but I don't think we can really keep this with uh, no blue mana, just two lands total. So pretty rough here, but let's go down to five. Okay, this I can work with. Probably have to keep Fable and Calamity Bear to dig deeper towards the missing combo pieces and then hope to get lucky. Up against the white deck. Second Calamity Bear, still combos with the first, I suppose. And Glimpse can help us hit our land drop for now. And don't know if it matters between Coast and Soaring City, since we're likely just playing it as a land anyway. So might as well go for Coast. So we've got turn 3 Fable coming up. Put on the green-white, maybe enchantments, yep. And there we see the wedding announcement. Ooh, a Battle Frost and Fire could come in handy. Can reset the opponent's boards, and maybe if we already have Calamity Bearer in play. We can do some serious damage, so there might still be hope. It's gonna be a Weaver. Pretty good with the wedding announcements, and that is a alternate art of Circle of Confinement. Exiling our token, so that's a nice answer. Phone makes another token end of turn. And I think we can get rid of one Calamity Bearer since we need to dig towards our Mind Link mech. And drew a second copy anyway. Okay, play Celestis for now, since we're setting up for Battle of Frost and Fire. And then there might be a chance we can combine Calamity Bearer with the Reflection of Kiki Jiki to get multiple copies going. Opponent plays Restoration to get a Plains, can copy it with Weaver perhaps, yep, to get a second Plains. Hits us for two, draws off wedding announcements. And Quakebringer is the draw. So we have some options. Could play Calamity Bearer, since it doesn't die to our own battle, Frost and Fire. Since I imagine our opponent is going to add more creatures to the board next turn. Or we could go for Quakebringer, which, you know, individually also hits pretty hard and is more mana efficient. But we also still have that Glimpse in the graveyard, so we can just replay that after playing Bear. And interesting choice here. The extra land could come in handy if I want to battle plus maybe activate Reflection next turn. Although I could also see Frostbite coming in handy if we need additional damage besides battle to maybe take out a transformed Restoration. Especially now with the Wedding Festivity giving it plus one plus one. 
So, restoration triggers. Opponent considering whether they want to copy it with Weaver, which they do. So they get to put two permanents in play from the graveyard, potentially. And a naturalist is going to be one of them. Discounting enchantments. And the second is going to be Catilda, I believe. Yep, that's the backside of Catilda. To potentially enchant a creature and pump it equal to the number of enchantments. Hallowed Haunting, also a scary one. And another wedding announcement. Well, that was a very good turn. Opponent even giving their creatures flying as they control, I believe, seven enchantments. But we've got a nice turn coming up. We can activate Reflection on Calamity Bearer before wiping the board with Battle Frost and Fire. And yeah, we've got two Calamity Bearers, each pumping each other. So that's 24 damage total, and her opponent's just dead. Wow, that's a kill out of nowhere. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Got an early strangle, Celestus for ramp. And one part of our combo with Calamity Bear. And now a glimpse to go digging. No Mind Link mech can either take a land or Fading Hope. Given that we already have a battle to reset the board, I would rather get the extra land, I think. And then could go for Hall as well, but we already have one in place, so go for the untapped land here. Turn to Thalia is annoying. Can Frostbite probably just strangle? And then next turn I can maybe Celestus plus Frostbite. Don't have a double rent for Calamity Bear. Spellbinder gonna mess up our hand. Can take our battle. But at least we have a Frostbite as more cheap interaction. Opponent takes Calamity Bearer instead. Fair enough. So play Celestus. No need to show them the pathway here. Leave up Frostbite, which most likely kills Spellbinder, although given that we have battle in hand, we can play it slow, punish the opponent for overextending. And next turn we've got a Calamity Bearer we can play. So I think I'm okay taking three. See if they have another Spellbinder, perhaps. Skyclave to grab Celestus. Okay. So I could float mana, kill Skyclave. After it exiles my artifact to get uh, Illusion. But probably just gonna battle Frost and Fire here. Would have preferred to play Calamity Bear first, but now that's not really an option. Could just go tap to Den and pass. That doesn't seem great. Let's just uh, battle. Get a 3-3 token, not take too much damage. And then we can also maybe put our creature lands to use in the near future. Ooh, nice Mindling mech. Great draw. Another battle I'll happily keep. And don't think we need anything else here. Adlin coming down after our battle was a good call from the opponents. But we'll play our Mind Link. And then could attack if our opponent blocks. We can finish off Adlin, since we do want to put our opponent within range of Bearer plus Mind Link mech, just finishing them off. Of course, they know about a Bearer plus Mind Link mech combo now. And 3 damage is not quite enough to put them within range. Also have to watch out for a potential Wandering Emperor exiling our tapped Mind Link. So that might affect how we play this out. We have a second battle on top, so we're not really in a hurry to uh, kill the opponent necessarily. Could have also stayed back to block and then used Frostbite on Adlin. Opponent going for a Thalia, which doesn't really change our plan. And a Sun Gold Sentinel. Alright. So next turn I can hit the opponent for 16 down to 1. 
I guess the uh, Glimpse getting exiled is good value for the opponents, but... Don't know if it's gonna make a huge difference. I guess we are at 12, so is there any danger I die next turn? Let's say our opponent animates Crawling Barons, attacks... Yeah, Adlin is getting pretty large. I guess I can keep my token back to Trump. And then we should be alright. Opponent's gonna be at 1. They might answer my Calamity Bearer. But then we still have a Battle of Frost and Fire and some creature lands to crew Mind Link to cross the finish line. So, not sure if I really need this Frostbite. Maybe I'm okay just killing Sun Gold Sentinel. End of turn. To make sure things don't get out of hand. So I could have saved myself one damage from Adlin, I suppose. So we'll crew using Calamity Bear. That's 16. Points at 1. And we have ways of crewing Mind Link again. Opponent cannot even cast a Wandering Emperor if they had one. Brutal Cathar, also not an answer. Can get rid of our Illusion. But then we're still alive, so goes after Calamity Bear. Yeah, I guess if they still had a Sun Gold Sentinel, they cleared the Illusion. We might have been in danger of dying. And we're just gonna battle again. And then we can crew with our Calamity Bearer for another 16 damage. Awesome, beat Mono White, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems acceptable. We've got some cheap removal, and then Celestus can also make blue mana for iteration, although ideally we find a blue land along the way to dig us towards Calamity Bear. But at least we shouldn't get run over thanks to those early burn spells. Let's see what we're up against. A red deck, another Mind Link, not exactly what we needed, but can maybe discard the second copy to our Fable if we draw it. Opponent is on a red-white aggro deck, but luckily found our third land here. And since we don't have our Calamity Barrier yet, I'm okay playing Celestus, keeps up Frostbite with three snow lands, so we can maybe deal three damage to a creature that shows up here. Although if they have Cavalier, it would come into play with an extra counter. And survive our Frostbite. Brutal Cathar we can take out. Although I'm kind of liking Strangle on Brutal Cathar so we can keep the instant speed Frostbite for later. And there's Calamity Bear, perfect. So play Mind Link. Strangle Cathar. And then next turn we can hit the opponent for 16. Although they could have answers to Calamity Bear, in which case... We'll need to find a second creature. For now, Raiju plus Etching is going to hit us for 7 total. So our opponent also has us on a pretty fast clock. So if I go for Calamity Bear, hit the opponent for 16, what's the worst case scenario? Opponent has a second Raiju, perhaps. And then how much damage are we taking? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, so we would be dead. So I don't know if we can afford that. So I might have to go for Expressive Iteration plus Frostbite, kill Raiju. And then, yeah, hope to find more interaction in general. A land's useful. And then Fable can go to hand, I suppose. Okay, so we can Frostbite Raiju. Could do it now, could wait. I guess Valor's Stance would punish us, so I don't know if it matters, but I'll pass. Maybe that changes the opponent's plan as well. Alright, they had the second Raichu, so glad we went with this approach. And then before they can attack, we'll take one out. But we're still taking a beating, and now 
we're not really in a position where we can easily crew mech and attack since we're just gonna die on the way back. So I'm gonna have to battle Frost and Fire, reset the boards, and hope there's no third haste creature here. At least no creature lands. Play with fire puts us to two. So we're dead to another burn spell. And adversary with haste will do it too. Alright, so... Had a reasonable draw, but uh, yeah, opponent also with a very good one. Featuring double Raichu. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got the combo all rolled up here, so I'm keeping. And then we can either keep up Frostbite, or make sure we can cast a turn to Glimpse, which is probably more important to hit our land drop. So I'll play a tapped coast. Opponent on a blue deck, turn one Delver, would have been nice to Frostbite. Get our double red online, and let's glimpse and hit a land. Okay, so I can play my Mind Link mech next turn. Delver does not transform at least. And we'll have to see if this is a mono blue deck or maybe like a blue white aura deck, another Delver. Okay. Fading Hope gives us some more interaction, and let's get a mech going here. Opponent is playing Jory Disruption, which is going to be annoying, and now a Fading Hope as well has an instant speed answer to Mind Link mech. So we need to catch our opponent a little bit off guard for them to be tapped out to get the 16 damage in. Ascendant Spirits. Alright, let's iterate to hit our land drop, and then we'll probably have to interact with our creatures here. Okay, Crush the Weak would actually be perfect, but won't be able to cast it this turn. So I guess we'll just um, put it in hands, and then we get to play our land. And then pass with a plan of... Probably using both Frostbite and Fading Hope. And then we can maybe bait out a Counterspell. Okay, so our opponent doesn't have two Snow Mana to level this up. Delver's probably just a bigger threat. So I can uh, Frostbite one of them, or I can Fading Hope and see if they have maybe a Hexproof trick that we can bait out as they do appear to be stuck on lanes. Spell Pierce, okay, that's what they were maybe considering on Iteration, so that's also good to get out of their hand. And then let's Frostbite and see if they have more interaction. Would love for them to tap out so we can get the 16 damage across, but we also need to make sure we don't die on the way back. It's gonna be a March of Swirling Mists to phase out their Aberration, so we only take four. So we're not necessarily dead next turn, even if they level up Ascendant Spirits, we're only taking 8. So I think going for Calamity Bear is reasonable. And then our opponent will be forced to bounce one of our creatures, probably have to wait for Mind Link Mech. And then we have our Sweepers to make sure we answer the creatures in the meantime. Although not our Spell Pierce could be bad. If they can play that alongside Fading Hope. And another March could also potentially save them by phasing out a creature. And given that they haven't drawn lands, they must have some spells in hand here. Okay, land 5 is useful. So step 1 might be to just attack with Calamity Bearer, have the opponent bounce it. Or I guess we can present two lethal threats by playing Fable, which can crew Mind Link and then both Bearer and Mech attack. But then if they have two copies of Fading Hope or 
like a march. We're still dead. Although I'm not sure how we're supposed to beat that. Because it's not like Crush the Weak necessarily saves us then. They can just phase out one of their aberrations and still hit us next turn. Yeah, going for Fable to crew the mech might be the best course of action. Can pay for Spell Pierce. But it's mostly March that we don't want to see. That happens. So we can crew the mech. And a Fading Hope to bounce the mech. That happens. So do they have a second Fading Hope now is a question. Let's find out. They don't, and our opponent takes six and dies. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got some interaction, some card draw. I'll keep. Can always get rid of Fading Hope with uh, our Fable if we don't think we need it. Turn one Kumano, always scary. But at least we have three Snowlands, two now. And plenty of cheap removal. So red-white, turn to Aspirants with an extra counter. I'll just kill that right now. And then I can play Fable to get that going. Brutal Cathar would be slightly annoying. But then we can maybe just crush the weak to clear the board. It's gonna be Ram Corolus instead. Okay, so the spell would deal damage to you or another permanent you control, prevent that damage. And if a spell would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent, it deals that much damage plus one instead. So sweepers and damage base removal is not gonna be very effective with a Ram in play. But we can attack. Do we need both copies of Fading Hope? Um, maybe one can go. Or do we want to get rid of Crush the Weak since it does kill our own Shaman? And with the Ram in play, it's kind of awkward. Of course, we could bounce Ram Corollus and then Crush the Weak. But it seems kind of difficult to set up. So maybe we'll just keep both Fading Hopes. Attack with our Shaman. Then we can iterate. Finding another Fable. Yeah, that looks good. And then we can Fable plus maybe grab the Hall so we can play Tapped next turn since we have the land to play Fable now. Yeah, that seems fine. So Hall in hand. Fable in exile. Does mean we'll take a little bit more damage next turn. But getting double Fable going seems nice. So take four. That's not too bad. Although we have to watch out for burn spells that can finish us off. Calamity Bearer, a great draw too. So I don't hate discarding Glimpse, because we can always play it for one mana once we play Calamity Bearer. And I'll hang on to everything else. Another Glimpse a draw. So let's start by attacking, and then those treasures will help us double spell. Opponent's got a Wandering Emperor to exile one of them. Sure. I hope you're ready to lose. Still got to make a treasure at least. And then play Calamity Bearer, replay Glimpse for one mana. And then keep up Fading Hope. And now do we want Crush the Weak or just grab a land? Land might be better. So I think I'm still in favor of Tapped Hall. Although I'm unlikely to not use a treasure for Fading Hope, so then I wouldn't necessarily be able to 
activate Hall. So if that's the case, maybe I just play the coasts, keep my treasure, and just doubling Calamity Bearer with Reflection could already do a ton of damage here. And this way we keep up double Fading Hope. And we'll wait and see where our opponent puts the counter from Emperor before playing our Bounce Spell. It's gonna be a Shadow Skull Charger. Okay. So 5-4 with Trample. Opponent pumps Ram Corollus. And Reflection plus Calamity Bear might just be game here. Can bounce Charger if we like. Strangle on top is fine. Although I guess with Ram in play it's not all that useful. But uh, yeah, we can bounce the etching to get that out of the way. And then we should have lethal with Reflection copying Calamity Bearer, another one on top. So a lot of options here. Could also copy Reflection a bunch of times before copying Calamity Bearer to get in a bit of extra damage. But this is already lethal. Two Calamity Bearers essentially dealing 12 each. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Hand is missing Calamity Bearer, but otherwise seems fine. Got both our colors, some cheap interaction, so we can deal with the opponent's early creatures and then turn three iteration to maybe find a land or get our Mind Link mech down. And probably prefer keeping up Frostbites over Fading Hope, although could get punished if we draw another creature land that needs to be played on turn one or two to enter untapped. Okay, can glimpse now. And hopefully find a land. Opponent with a spell pierce. Okay, that's unfortunate. So opponent more of a controlling deck, maybe kind of a blue-white creature aura deck. And we can mind link mech here. And then wait one more turn on iteration. The longer we wait on it, the better it gets usually. And if they have another spell pierce. So be it. It's gonna be a make disappear instead to counter it. So our opponent really likes their counter spells. And a virtuoso the play as we suspected. But we've got multiple answers. I think I still iterate first. Although a spell pierce would be annoying. Although I really need to hit my land drop here. Alright, so... In hand goes Fable, I think. And then we can Strangle. Still keep up Fading Hope in case of any interaction here. Alright, opponent's gonna slip out the back, or at least attempt to. Probably fine to let them connive. And then I can Fading Hope in their turn. If they maybe put more stuff on the Virtuoso. Like a Guiding Voice. And hope there's no more protection. Right, another slip out the back. At least they won't get to learn now as it fizzles. But they do have a large Virtuoso. So if uh, they have another answer to Fading Hope, we're in trouble. So I could upkeep Fading Hope before they draw into another potential answer. Yeah, that seems safer. Alright, that worked. And a Frostbite will keep, so now we can kill a smaller Virtuoso. Another Sorcery Speed Pump Spell. Kill Virtuoso before they can put more counters on it. And we've got another cheap spot removal spell at the ready. So I don't think I discard Frostbite. Just hit for two. Keep up our interaction. 
And then maybe Hall can be animated soon. Opponent's got a Storm Chaser Drake. It's gonna draw a card with Homestead Courage. But before they draw, we'll kill it. So they can draw into another protection spell. And yeah, for opponents out of creatures, we should be in great shape. Can animate our hull using our treasure. And can even glimpse second main since we now control a giant. And what do we like? Calamity Bearer looks good. Can play it and copy it with Reflection next turn for the finale. And our opponent explodes, so a close one here against the blue-eyed Virtuoso deck. Had just enough removal to keep us alive. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Could use some removal. But Fable can help us dig towards Mind Link Mac to combine with Calamity Bear. Up against a green deck. Green-white. With a turn to Innkeeper, so maybe a ramp deck. Let's glimpse. And Celestus vs. Frostbite. Close call. Uh, killing Innkeeper, not a priority. Opponent's probably playing a Seacast Chariot, which Frostbite also doesn't really answer. So at that point I might be better off grabbing Celestus. Even though I don't know if I want to play it next turn. There's a turn 3 Chariot, as expected. Okay, so we need to find a Sweeper. And we need to find it soon. There we go. Battle of Frost and Fire, right on cue. So Celesta sets up turn 4 battle. Can wait and see if we can maybe afford to play Calamity Bear first. To get that one-sided Sweeper effect. Another innkeeper's fine. Could maybe also be a teleportation circle deck, and Spirited Companion sort of confirms that. So, Chariot's gonna stick around, but hopefully they won't be able to crew it as easily. And yeah, we're just too far behind on board to do anything but battle. If I just go for Calamity Bear. What happens if they have an answer to it? Attack with a team. That's six, seven, eight, and nine damage, so we're not quite dead. Maybe I can afford to wait one more turn. Would certainly leave us in a better spot if we can actually start attacking with Calamity Bear. Hmm, close one. I can also flashback Glimpse, so it would still be a very efficient turn. All right, let's try it. But this might be a mistake. And then, I guess we already have a land. Quakebringer's fine. Can maybe discard it to the second chapter to deal extra damage with Calamity Bearer in case of a board stall. Skyclave. Yeah, that exiles Calamity Bearer and helps crew the chariots. So now we're taking 11, I believe. Down to 1. Although we will get a blocker once we wipe the boards and kill Apparition. So, let's battle. Opponent's still stuck on three lanes at least. And then if we cast Quakebringer on the third chapter, we could also maybe draw some extra cards. Adversary can crew chariots and force a trade, which I guess I'm happy to make. But our opponent's gonna hang back. Okay, so we get to scry. And probably want to keep the untapped land on top. As we can iteration into it. I don't think we keep Glimpse when we have all these Fables, although I guess Fable makes Glimpse better with all the Giants to discard it. Although do I want to find it with Iteration as a question? I can Iteration and then play the land for free, 
and put Glimpse in hand. And then play some Fables as blockers, although we have to watch out for the Trampling Adversary. So I might have to play a Giant instead. Yeah, I guess we'll still keep both on top here. Although digging for 3 damage removal could be better, even though we already put some of those Frostbites on the bottom. So go for Iteration, putting Glimpse in hands, exiling Coast. And then, yeah, I think playing Calamity Bear is okay, although it does get exiled by another Apparition, whereas Quakebringer does not. And then we still have a Quakebringer next turn to go with Battle. Could also go Fable plus Fortel a Quakebringer, is it better? How are they gonna get rid of my Illusion when Skyclave doesn't work? I guess they could have Brutal Cathar, which would be bad. Although they're not guaranteed to play that, as it's not as good to flicker that one. I guess I'll take the risk of playing Fable and foretelling Quakebringer. And then next turn we can discard Glimpse, plus maybe even a second Quakebringer. Play one to trigger Battle, and take it from there. If they play another creature capable of crewing Chariot, that's also not great, since then I'm going to be forced to jump with a Shaman while trading for Adversary. A land 4 could be another Chariot to crew the first one. Teleportation Circle instead. Alright, so that can keep flickering Chariot to make a pair of cats every turn. And Adversary going to force a trade. All right. At one life, this is a scary combo. So, if that happens, probably don't have time to cast the second Quake Bringer, so we'll just discard it to passively deal damage with it. And Glimpse can go as well. So, nice second chapter as we find another Calamity Bear. So, we'll play Quake Bringer to trigger our third chapter of battle. Fading Hope's nice. One Hall can go. And then we could Glimpse, keep up Fading Hope, or I could play a Calamity Bear, so that the Quakebringer from Graveyard starts dealing more damage. Could also tank with a Shaman. If our opponent crews Chariot, we bounce the Chariot, making them replay it. Although, could be bad if they then have another Skyclave Apparition to remove my second blocker. Although we can just play another Fable too. Yeah, let's attack with a Shaman. And then see if they want to crew Chariot. But I kind of doubt it. Opponent takes two. And then... Yeah, Calamity Bearer is weak to Skyclave unless we also keep up Fading Hope. Gonna have to keep up Fading Hope no matter what. So in that case, I'm not hitting Glimpse, Fable, Keep Up Fading Hope. Or we can just get the Calamity Bearer going so that we start dealing damage with Quakebringer sooner. Could have also tried to use the Channel on Crucible to make extra blockers. But we'll try this. It's gonna be a Gala Greeters, that's fine. And Companion. So we're gearing up for some big turns with Calamity Bearer, especially with the Reflection as well. But our opponent is going wide, and uh, yeah, we're gonna need to match their creatures in number of blockers, which is not gonna be trivial. And they do have a pretty significant life total buffer. Circle going for Companion. I guess we might as well bounce that. Deny the card draw, and it's essentially a lethal attacker as a 1-1. And don't need the untap land, I don't think. Alright, so double Quakebringer triggers. Doubled by Calamity Bearer as well. So 4 damage each, and there's our Mind Link mech. Is it too little too late? Can Glimpse. Just looking for any interaction, and Fading Hope will do. 
Play Mind Link. Play Fable, keep up Fading Hope. Or we could attack with a Shaman. Don't think that's necessary, let's just play Fable. And then I'm not really planning to attack, although Skyclave Apparition exiling Mind Link could be annoying, which is a reason to still keep up the pressure here. But I do need to make sure I keep enough blockers back. So, in that case, maybe Shaman and Quakebringer attack. That seems a little risky. Let's just hang back and hope there's no Skyclave for Mind Link. And then with another Calamity Bearer, if they try and exile the first one, we can still copy it with Reflection, and then Mind Link will do the rest. Dawnbringer Cleric can get rid of enchantments. So it can go after Reflection. That's fine. Three mana left. And it's gonna be a Brutal Cathar. Okay. Probably goes after a Shaman token. Unless they're scared of the Calamity Bear. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we still have enough blockers to survive. Quakebringer also denying the life gain, a small side note. So they probably should have chosen the plus one counter. Circle, end of turn. Goes for Dawnbringer, let's bounce it so they don't get to take out our enchantments. And yeah, that should be game here. Especially with another Calamity Bearer coming up. Definitely gonna play it to increase our damage even more. So that's another four each. Play Calamity Bearer. Crew Mind Link Mech. Reflection can copy another Calamity Bearer. And that should be a lot of damage, so hopefully our opponent's patient enough to wait here. Probably wanted to copy the 4-3 flyer instead. Tank with all. But yeah, that's four Calamity Bears, so... The one unblocked flyer by itself should deal quite a bit of damage. And there we go, minus 101. So, mission accomplished. And yeah, what did we learn about our Blue Rats Calamity combo deck? It's incredibly satisfying when it all lines up, either curving Mind Link into Calamity Bearer, or even just copying our Calamity Bearer with Reflection of Kigijiki, also quite effective. Now, of course, our deck is still pretty weak against some of those red-white aggro decks, as we usually don't have time to set up our combo, because 16 damage is not enough for a one-hit kill, and in the meantime our opponent's attacking us with a ton of haste creatures that will usually kill us faster, so that seems like a pretty rough matchup, which also kind of means that this deck probably isn't viable enough to be played on the ranked ladder, as Boro still remains very popular. But as a casual deck, it's a ton of fun. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.